Thank you for staying with us. It's still the live coverage of uh, the Edo governorship election where we have been bringing you details of uh, developments uh, as it relates to the election. We have seen uh, some of uh, the governorship, leading governorship candidates cast their ballot, for instance. Uh, Mundi Okwebolu uh, is said to, is, has uh, cast his ballot, and uh, we have also seen the mother of uh, Adam Sashamale also cast a ballot, and she talked about how important it is uh, that uh, the process goes seamlessly. We also saw the police come out to say that they made some arrests of some political thugs uh, yesterday and are saying that uh, they are ready to walk the talk and ensure that uh, the process is uh, seamless and safe for the electorate to turn out and cast their ballot. We've seen the rain pouring, but uh, that didn't stop some of the residents uh, of Edo State turning out to go exercise their franchise. And we have seen that uh, INEC, uh, um, at some location, pulling units, uh, walked the talk of ensuring that uh, the materials were delivered in time, while some areas, INEC materials, voting materials, were not delivered on time as well. Standing by now to speak with us is Theophilus Ilama, a senior reporter. He's at Udomi Primary School in Uwesa. Uh, he is going to bring us up to speed with the developments uh, with regards to voting processes, uh, the turnout of persons there, and what the situation is at uh, Western Primary School. Theophilus, paint us a picture of how the process is going there. All right, Veronica, of course, the process has been um, seamless so far. Um, before we got to this area, we had to... Um, go through some bad roads coupled with the rain and everything. It took us about an hour or so or a bit more to get here, about two hours here to get here. And we got here and met the governorship candidates already on the queue waiting to vote. Of course, there are three um, polling units here at um, Udomi Primary School in Uwesa. The governorship candidate of the APC um, cast his ballot um, at the first polling unit down there. As you can see with my hand, is that first polling unit there. And after which um, we spoke with him, he described the process as seamless and free and fair, and of course um, commended INEC for the work it has done. And of course, he also commended security agencies for the work they have done as well in ensuring that everyone can be accredited and they can cast their ballot. You can see that despite the fact that rain uh, fell and it's about it's drizzling as, as we as we speak, people are still here. Um, waiting to cast their ballot, and some people are waiting just, just in front of me here uh, under the canopies, waiting to uh, monitor the process. Even as we have international observers who have come around, INEC officials have come around to observe the process as well, and they have described it as a very uh, fair process so far. All right, and um, quickly talk to us if uh, INEC came in on time with uh, necessary materials. Uh, for the people to exercise their franchise. That's on the one hand. How have the people been relating also with security operatives present at the polling unit? Well, first of all, um, the officials got here quite on time, set up on time. They got, like we were at INEC yesterday at Irua, and um, the materials were distributed. And um, this is Ward 2. Now, Ward 2 was one of the first... Um, uh, wards that, that got their unit because of the distance and the fact that the road leading to this area is not really motorable. And so they had to leave on time. And so they got here quite on time. As for the security operatives, um, uh, the people are working with them well. The security operatives have been cooperating and ensuring that um, the, the peace is kept and the people have been obeying every order that has been given to them. Even as we're coming to this place, we saw several checkpoints. And at different points, we have to identify ourselves, and they allow those parts. But if you cannot identify yourself, they'll see that send you back or just keep you somewhere to wait if, if where you are heading to is quite far. But, um, of course, security agencies are doing, we're doing quite a good job of ensuring that law and order is maintained. We got in here, and um, we saw that everybody was, was doing well. Everybody was sitting down, enjoy, ensuring that um, the process goes on fine. Everybody was orderly. And security operatives that were here were doing their job to ensure that um, the elections goes on quite fine. All right, uh, Theophilus, have you had a conversation with um, 
some of the people that he said sitting down, you, you, you try to talk to them to just know their view. Are they comfort, um, comfortable and confident in INEC and the process? And also, um, the issue of voter apathy did not really occur there. What are your thoughts on that? Yes, the issue of voter apathy didn't really occur there. Like, if you can see, just, I'm going to walk behind here. You will see a lot of people here waiting for the process to be done so they can monitor um, the counts, the vote counts, and all of that. Um, Edo residents in this area who have come to cast their ballot have, have described the, 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 the process as quite good. They say that it's, it's quite seamless so far. They just got in there, got accredited, and voted. But as it is, we still have people coming in to cast their ballot. So we expect that at this particular um, area, away from primary school, we should expect that um, people, the, the process finishes on time, but we, we also, we're also also expecting that people will stay back to monitor the process and the monitor the vote counts and all of that. And that's been, you know, Edo residents has, uh, are very uh, politically aware, and so they will stay uh, to monitor the process and ensure that nothing happens in this area. All right, Theophilus, um, I see a number of persons there. Let's talk about the demographics now. Uh, the women against the men, that was one concern that our former guest who was in the studio, uh, Charles Hidejo, mentioned that he is worried, that, uh, seemingly worried, that uh, women, there was not much turnout of women at uh, the polling units. Uh, talk to us. Uh, what your observations are with regards to that. That's on the one hand. And then were provisions made for persons with disability where you are? All right, Veronica, from what we have seen on the ground, we saw that there were a lot of women here. Yes, definitely there are more men than women, but the demography is quite, um, it's not too much. The difference is not too much. We see a lot of women here. Some, a lot of them come in. I sent a video earlier, which I took from my phone, of the governorship candidate uh, with an elderly woman who came to vote here. Yeah. So if you can see, there are some women sitting down there. Several people are checking for their names at, uh, at the register there. A lot of women are here as well to cast their ballot. That, this shows the level of awareness that everyone has as it regards this election. But... There are a lot of women here, there are a lot of men here, but all the same, um, it seems to be even, but not quite even. Then for persons with disability, talk to us about the provisions made for them by INEC. All right, so far so good. Um, we haven't uh, seen anybody with disability come here to cast their ballot, but what we have noticed, uh, what I have noticed is that I saw when the, an elderly person came to vote, um, it's either officials will come and help her to go up or residents will come and help uh, the elderly person to, to the staircase and cast their ballot and leave. The, 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 there seems to be some form of co uh, cooperation amongst um, voters in this place such that they are allowing the elderly move, uh, move forward to cast their ballot and leave so that they can go home and rest. That's what we have seen here so far. Earlier on, at some polling units, we saw the presence of the EFCC, as you know, to address the matter of vote buying. Um, I haven't seen anyone wear an EFCC shirt where you are, but perhaps you could tell us if uh, they are present at that polling unit. Well, Veronica, they, we haven't seen any um, EFCC official here as regards vote buying. And my, my mindset is that... Um, because of the distance between here and um, the main town of Irwa, um, it might take a while for them to get here because of how long it took us to get here as well. But for now, we haven't seen any official of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission come here to uh, check vote buying. And um, this, it, it, from what we have seen so far, um, we haven't seen any, anything of that sort. And EFCC officials, we haven't seen anyone so far. Now, you, you want to ask a question? Okay. Now, the other matter would be uh, how long or how far are the people willing to go to ensure that their votes count? Um, we see that um, some persons are still seated there. I'm wondering if it is that they are yet to cast their ballot or what's the situation of things with them? Well, from what we have seen, many of them have cast their ballot and are just waiting. 
um, when we got to Benin City on Sunday and got to work immediately, uh, we spoke with people both in Benin City and, of course, in um, Irua when we came, and we realized that um, they are saying that they will, they will do anything they have to do to ensure that they, cast their, they, they protect their vote and vote in the right leaders that will lead their those states. So that's, that's what we have seen here so far. And that's why we see people sitting down under the canopies we, we showed earlier and people waiting here. Some people have actually cast their ballots here, but they are still waiting. They are still waiting to ensure that their vote counts. Many people have said they are not leaving until they have, they are, the process is ended. Of course, I could see some women holding chairs. It seems they want to, you know, find a, yes, a comfortable Yes, they want to sit down and rest. Where they yes. can sit and monitor the process. But and you quickly, can see an elderly woman as well. Right. But quickly, Theophilus, before we let you go, uh, the, the machines, how effective have they been? Has there been an incident of perhaps a breakdown of a bivas or any of the machines, the processes? Uh, how smooth has it been? Well, Veronica, so far we haven't seen an, an incident where the beavers did not work. We have seen that people going to cast their ballots um, have been going, it's been going on quite smoothly. So, so far so good. We haven't seen that incident, but we are still here and we will monitor as well. We'll keep monitoring to see if that will happen, but so far we haven't seen any of that. All right. Theophilos Elama will definitely keep tabs with you for more development uh, out of uh, Udomi Primary School, Uwesa, where you are right now. Thank you. All right, thank you, Theophilus. All right, we'll move over quickly. We have uh, Hamzat Lawal, who is Executive uh, Director, Connected Development uh, Civil Society Group, monitoring the, the election. He is in Benin. Um, Hamzat, thank you for joining us. So from your perspective, how has the process been? 